Next question is from Cha Cha Joseph. Did you guys have a niche when you were personal trainers, or did you just train anyone and everybody? So this so this makes this reminds me of a pet peeve I used to have mm. with new trainers. N- new trainers coming into the gym, they want to work for me or whatever, and they would say things like, "I want to work with uh, athletes," or "My niche is like <laughs> yeah. you're a new trainer, okay?" Single moms only. Yeah. When I <laughs> <laughs> okay, creep. Well, yeah. <laughs> when saying. I when I was a new trainer, okay, my niche was people who wanted personal training. That was it. I didn't yeah. care who you were. Yeah. I didn't care what your goal was. I'm a new trainer. I'm trying to build my business. I didn't start focusing on a niche until I became much more experienced, until uh, I started to have more value in the market in the sense that I used to get a lot of referrals. Then, I, then when I got to the point where I could say no to people and I had a, uh, this reputation, that's when I started to have my niche. And the people I enjoyed training the most really – I love training everyday people always. Uh, athletes were cool, but I like everyday people. I loved training people in advanced age. That was probably my favorite. And selfishly, it's because in between sets, uh, the conversations I would have with these people who were in their 60s, 70s, and 80s was just phenomenal. There's so mm. much wisdom. I, think I it- also like to see them progress and mm. their lifestyles change. That was really awesome. But in the beginning, I don't have a niche. I, like- I don't think I think you should change the way you're saying that too. I think it's less of that you you liked it, more of it that you were good at it. And I think that's I think that's how you find your niche. Like I mean, yeah. I would you work your way towards your niche, right? And and I I think it's not I think it's something that subconsciously kind of happens, right? Like that's I that's a good point. I, I I would like to have thought that my niche was going to be sports. You know, because I like sports, I like training for sports myself. I liked athletes. I followed all that stuff, and so. I thought I would be great with them. I, I wasn't great with athletes. That's, that wasn't my, I, 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 or else I would have had a ton of them, right? I ended up being like really good with like this middle aged, uh, you know, CEO, like high performer, type high, high stress, type A personality. Um, I didn't go into it thinking that. What ended up happening was I hit it out the park with a few of those clients, and then those ones start referring other mm-hmm. friends like them. Before you knew it, all of a sudden I had my my schedule filled with a majority of that client. That's a great point. It's well, like you're, it's like you don't find your niche; your niche ends up finding you. That's the thing, and it, yeah, I mean, very similar to that uh, demographic was it, it was the best client that was the most consistent that paid me the most, and I could actually make a business around it. So it actually shifted my focus because I was that guy that wanted the athletic, you know, the athletic training only. And that would be like awesome in my dream to have like a facility where I just train these crazy athletes and pro athletes and all this kind of stuff, which was great. But also like what was I was attracting and what was available uh, was this like really type A, like I, I want the most effective, efficient, uh, type of a workout and, and, and schedule as possible. And I need you to be able to help me with this. Uh, and here's what I have. And they were like the best for me. So I just went more in that direction. Eventually it was just like, that's right there for me. And, you know, I have to put my own interests sort of over here to, to understand that this is really what's available. Yeah. I, you know, it's funny because I'd say the, a lot of trainers, when they become trainers, the niche that I think is popular with trainers is athletes because mm-hmm. they they themselves are probably athletes or fitness fanatics or and beauty models yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're thinking i'm going to i'm going to become a trainer and i'm going to train athletes probably the hardest niche i can think of because if you're training young athletes they don't have money and then if you're training uh, high level athletes they usually don't pay for training like yeah. if you're if you're yeah. a pro athlete they have trainers knocking down the door to train them oh, for I free. Oh, I got stories. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Some douchebag uh, uh, pro players that uh, there are a lot popped of them. out on, on their payments. Oh, yeah. A lot of them are like that because they yeah. get so much, stuff for free, so much stuff for free. They they think because they have this big name that that's a great opportunity for you to get your name out there. So train me for free. So, yeah, no, I'm with you guys. I mean, I, and for sure you, Justin, like that, I thought that that was my dream. If you asked me at, you know, 1920 when I was first getting into it, like, Oh, one day I want to be the you know the trainer for the Giants. You know, like I, <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah, you wanted to be a trainer for a pro sports team, and uh, again, like you, Sal, I I took anybody and everybody. You know, when you're trying to build your business and you're starving and you're trying to pay the bills, uh, you obviously should take everybody you possibly can whenever you can, and then over time you refine your schedule, and you then again your niche finds you. It really did. I had I had no clue it was going to be that, nor did I want that. I didn't think I didn't go like all oh, this. Yeah, I really like training these people. 
it's I I did well with them, you know. They and I, maybe because I connected and I related to them really well, or I had a lot of the right answers for those types of people, mm -hmm. and they began to refer more and more clients. And before you knew it, this became you know my niche. But I don't think you should start as a trainer trying to find like what uh, my niche is going to no, be. No, if you're trying to build your business, especially if you're a younger trainer and you don't have a whole bunch of other responsibilities. Um, you train anybody and everybody and uh, to build your business. I mean, when I first started, you know, of course I was a kid, but I remember, you know, I worked in gyms that were open uh, 24 fitness. So I was open 24 hours and I it used to, we used to trip me out that there were, uh, you know, I'd go to the fitness manager. I remember at the time and I'd say, does anybody need a trainer? And they'd be like, oh yeah, there's these three people. One of them wants to train at 10 o'clock at night. This one wants to work out at 4 a.m. And this one wants to work out at 5 a.m. I took them all. And no trainer wanted to train them. <laughs> yeah, and I yeah. remember thinking how crazy that was. Like yeah. all these trainers over here talking about building their business, there's three clients they don't want to take because they don't like the time. Like I'll take those clients. Right. And I just trained everybody, everybody I possibly could.